So good morning. In the absence of the fiery sun, here we have the fiery Ponciana and the red blossoms are gradually filling out the tree, our Pentecost tree, so to say, which is usually completely blossomed for Pentecost. Everything seems to be running a little bit late, I think, in this spring. Here you get a little close up. Look at all the blossoms that are going to open here. A big, big tree of fire. Just a little update on this. So this morning, it doesn't matter where we look, it looks like the sky is 100% same type of cloud coverage. Even they're talking about possible rain in the north, which is very unusual in June. I'm going to take you over to our garden as well. That's my plan because there's the talk of the fig tree and I want to show you a fig tree. And actually there are little figs coming along because also one of our readings is talking about the fig tree this morning. And our one has quite a little bit of fruit, at least when I saw it a couple of days ago. Tomorrow will be our last little snippet from the book of Sirach or Sirach. An extraordinary book written at the time of the encounter of culture of Hellenism and this grandfather whose grandson translates it into Greek and we know the name of the author of the book because it's written there I don't know if we know the exact name of a lot of the books the way they were written in the Old Testament and so we have the very important little passage today is the introduction to a whole series of chapters on great personalities of the history of salvation. It's a great awareness of history. The whole Bible really is a very, it's very conscious of history and this book in particular is also it's in the context when the culture Hellenic culture after Alexander the Great's conquest and the dominance of Greek culture subsequently for centuries really that's why it became eventually with the Christian influence also the Byzantine culture so it's almost a thousand years of Greek cultural dominance until the advent then of Islam in the Middle East. And so this small little people, this chosen people, carrying a great treasure in their hearts, in their memory, are concerned about their young people encountering this culture and how they fare with their own heritage, their own cultural heritage, their religious heritage. And that encounter this is a lemon tree, as you can see. Very small little one there coming along. Everything starts out tiny here's another lemon tree and here's our fig tree but we'll come back to that in a moment because we want to talk a little bit about that 
So then uh, there's a great wisdom because it's a pondering of experience. And yesterday we had that marvelous contemplation of, of uh, nature, of creation. This is a pomegranate. In Spanish, they call them granada. See the little, little ones coming along. And then there are others that are already more formed, like this one here. It's a very important fruit in local culture here. And there's a hotel in Tiberias called Rimonim, which is the, the plural for pomegranate. So those are a little further ahead. I saw another bigger one as well here. Two, oh, there's three in here, look at this. Coming along here. We got a present of two little avocado trees. This is right, really big. This is probably the biggest one there is here yet, until some others are, haven't even started. Still in blossom. This is a little avocado tree. A wonderful friend, Wilfried, planted this. We, we had a, one earlier that was as tall as the stick, but it never, it never, it, it struggled for a while, and then its battle ended. And this is the latest one he bought, brought before returning to, to. Um, Germany for it comes here quite often for periods and our latest edition I'm not sure how they're doing we need some specialists to look at them are three aloe vera which are also in the property over near the other house but a volunteer transplanted them over to here so we'll see we we'll hope that they'll make it and one thing that can kill them is water but that's interesting isn't it because they're a desert plant. So too much water is bad for them. And here we have our pomelos. They grow to be very huge, but this past winter they actually stayed much smaller than usual. And here they're coming along. And then this is an orange tree, but it doesn't have much fruit. And that's the theme today of the gospel regarding another tree. There's another one coming. Last year it had a lot more. This is another orange tree with quite a few more. It's kind of a red orange. Isn't it great that Father Arturo took time and interest to do this? As he planted these about 10 years ago. And here we have these ones coming. These are mandarins. And there are lots of them. There are typically a lot of mandarins here on this tree. And here we have a little plum tree, and they did come this year, but not too many. More than last year. Oh, there's one here, look at this. Would you like to taste it? This one isn't ready, right, right ready yet. There's another little one in here. Also needs a little more time. Sometimes the birds are ahead of us here. And take a swipe out of them. This one here looks a little better. Yeah, this is ripe. I'm going to try this for you and see if you like the taste, okay? Mmm. It's delicious. Mmm. How do you like it? Mmm, these are the capers, remember? This cat's too lazy to move. So here we come to our fig tree. There's a lot more to say about the book of Sirach. Um, I encourage you to read a good biblical introduction to its history. 
and how actually its use has been confirmed because it was found in, there was a lot of doubt, it was never included in the Hebrew canon. And it was, um, it was um, from the very beginning of the, of the church, there was a great echo of this book in the New Testament. That's why it's in the canon. And that's why the church fathers appreciated it so much. And it's a book of great wisdom, and it sees the God, hand, God's hand in the not just the rising up of all the creatures in creation, all these wonderful fruit trees, but particularly God's hand in the life of people, that God carries us along, that God raises us up, that God raises his people up and brings them to great blossoming in virtue. And so the hand of providence, and this is also a great part of wisdom, to understand how we are, are blessed. And tomorrow we'll have the last reading from Sirach before moving on then to the book of Tobit next week, God willing. So here we're looking at a fig tree and you can see the size of the leaves that covers my hand completely. So now you understand why the Genesis story has the fig leaves covering up the shame of Adam and Eve. You can also see the shade that the fig tree gives in the heat. Fig trees grow bigger, also taller and then they give beautiful fruit, delicious fruit. There's nothing here. I can't let you taste anything here right now because they're not ripe, but this one is very close to get, you know, it's still hard. This is a big fig. See all the figs that are here. There are a lot of figs this year. Last year, the figs didn't ripen well. And today's gospel story is about a fig tree and Jesus wants figs. There's one down here that looks closer to ripe. No, it's still quite hard. They usually turn that color, like a purplish color. And they become very soft and lush. And they're sweet, and juicy. Look at all the figs in here. Wow. If they mature properly, that'll be a great, a great harvest. And the message today in the gospel story is that the fig, the fig tree that doesn't bear fruit is a symbol. It's also in the context of the cleansing of the temple in chapter 11 of Mark's gospel. It's getting close to the passion, death and resurrection account in Mark's gospel. In a couple of weeks, we'll be starting, we'll be finished with reading from Mark's Gospel and heading over to Matthew. So we read the three Gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, or M Mark, Matthew, and Luke throughout the liturgical year. And so we are almost just have another couple of weeks with Mark. And this is a very strong image about bearing fruit. And if God raises up our lives, then that can be our prayer today. And we can also pray for people whom we see in very difficult situations of wasted lives in our mind, the way we see things, the, the way people have lived with addictions, with all kinds of situations. We don't know all the background to all of that, but we could pray that the Lord will turn those lives into fruitful lives, even old lives. My uncle's sister had a little sadness yesterday. She's in her 90s and her, her um, I think it's her younger sister, two years younger, passed away. Imagine living 90 years of age, you know, it's a great age, isn't it? Oh, there's another fig here. This is actually a different fig tree here. It's a smaller one, but it has it's equally big leaves. And here there are a couple of figs. Last year as well, they were ahead of the other ones. 
and this one like it's a little softer so we can pray that people also in their elderly years that they can bear a lot of fruit also as suffering sometimes increases and approaches that that fruit will mature and blossom it may not be fully ripe yet and you can't really see its completion but in god's good time fruit will ripen in our lives we can have that great trust in providence that let's check if the sun made any appearance over here if um, in god's good time the fruit can appear in our lives and we can pray for that and we can pray for that in our own lives and in the lives of others so the sun has a hard time coming out today we'll wrap up like we started with our ponciana tree over here it's a smaller and younger one but it has an abundance of red as well So thank you for this little stroll today. God bless you. See you later, alligators. And may your lives be fruitful. I pray for that today. And the Lord knows how to measure the fruitfulness of our lives. Think of the great artists that were unknown in their day and they became famous afterwards. I'm sure there must be a lot of saints that we'll be very surprised with. Maybe those with whom we're living, and it'll turn out that they had great virtue. They were quiet, but they did so much good. They were so close to God, they received His grace so freely, so generously. Wow, look at that, the inside of that flower. God bless you.